Hi, I'm Mark Richardson, Dean of the OHSU School of Medicine. At the School of Medicine, we are so proud of the work our 17,500 alumni do wherever they are. The Alumni Association Awards celebrate the work and achievements of four individuals who've made significant contributions here in Oregon, nationally, and internationally. Dr. Adam Wright received his PhD from OHSU in 2007. His work is to make electronic health records more dynamic and code them so that they behave the way physicians think. His recent election to the American College of Medical Informatics is a tribute to the respect in which he is viewed by his peers. I'm Adam Wright. I work at the Brigham and Women's Hospital in Boston, which is one of the teaching hospitals of Harvard Medical School. I was actually the first student to complete my PhD in biomedical informatics at OHSU. Sort of an interesting field. There were interesting problems. There was a lot of good work left to do. Uh, and most importantly, there was a really a chance to help people. Physicians and patients partner more closely, uh, use all of the data that we were collecting uh, to improve our knowledge and to improve evidence-based practice. I spent about 80% of my time doing research in the area of biomedical informatics informatics and then about 20% teaching medical students and graduate students about biomedical informatics. And so we have two large NIH grants right now. One of them is focused on electronic health records and uh, strategies for improving the accuracy of clinical documentation. Electronic health records are becoming very essential to care, but they're also becoming very complex. And as they become more complex, there's more opportunities for them to malfunction. I really hope that in 10 years, people will look at the computer and say, this is my partner. When I take care of a patient, whether it's in the hospital or in the clinic or in their home, it informs my decisions, it makes me faster and better and safer. I enjoy using it and uh, my patients are, are healthier because of it. End of life conversations can be difficult for families and healthcare providers to have. The Pulse form that Dr. Susan Toll created makes those conversations easier. Today, the Pulse form is in use nationally and internationally. I was here at OHSU for six years before I pursued the fellowship in clinical medical ethics at the University of Chicago, and where I and colleagues wrote the grants that opened the doors of the Ethics Center. The Ethics Center started out with one staff person and me. We have three endowed chairs, we have five staff, and we have many, many people who donate their time as professionals, who partner with us in holding conferences. And when we go and speak, we literally partner, and your community is stronger, and a sense of real connection to the people of this state. Who knew that the Center for Ethics and Healthcare would build things that would be used all across this country? For example, the Pulse program has had over a million Pulse forms completed. The vision is to build a program in compassionate communication. There are times where people are scared or they feel alone or depersonalized or not heard. If we listen better to patients and develop systems that do, medicine will be safer. This is the whole next chapter of our work. It's one thing to really improve care near the end of life, and it's another to improve it across the entire lifespan. I don't see anything but further growth for the Ethics Center, for the work we do, on the horizon. Dr. Robert Steiner has served as a mentor to 20 PhD candidates, 15 postdoctoral fellows, and many dozens of other students, fellows, and junior faculty. He investigates the brain mechanisms that regulate reproduction. He is also helping to lead a curriculum reform effort at the University of Washington. I teach uh, several courses. I teach a course in uh, neuroendocrinology, which involves um, the study of how the brain regulates autonomic functions, like growth, for example, but also reproduction. And then I teach um, a medical school course um, in uh, human reproduction. For the last 10 years or so, we have studied a molecule called kispeptin that play a vital, critical role for a complicated process of regulating reproduction. So we've become very interested in what is the cellular and molecular basis of menopausal hot flashes. And that activity occupies what the lab is currently studying, and that includes the undergraduates, graduate students, and other folks in the lab. I start every class with a poem. Booming against the old brick wall. As a medical educator, I feel like that is part of my responsibility to shine a light on the humanity 
that is involved in all these conversations about whether it's heart disease or it's about infertility or it's about the loss of a child or the struggles that, um, that individuals have with, with their own families. So poetry, I think, you know, speaks to that. Dr. John Tung was the driving force in placing Oregon's seatbelt law on the books. Due to his quiet but persistent leadership, this law has saved hundreds of lives since 1990. And he continues to work on the issues of road and transportation safety today. Uh, I'm an orthopedic surgeon uh, practicing in Clackamas County, and I'm a volunteer member of the OHSU orthopedic department. I grew up in Portland, went to Lincoln High School, took off to Northwestern University for undergraduate training. I went to medical school at St. Louis University for coming back home to do my internship as a rotating zero on the hill, followed by a year of general surgery with Dr. William Kerpain. I have a very strong identity with the state of Oregon. My great-grandfather was a, a member of Congress. On his third try, passed the bill that made Crater Lake a national park. My father was uh, also a great inspiration to me, and, and scouting was uh, inspirational to me in terms of studying citizenship. I was appointed to uh, the Drunk Driving Task Force and found out that most of us were not wearing safety belts. So I started working on that. People were arguing that it was against their personal freedom to be told that they needed to be buckled up. And so we failed multiple times in the legislature. So we took the uh, initiative to file a public citizen initiative and we were able to pass that. I think uh, being able to do leadership outside of the day-to-day -day life of medicine is a real luxury. You have to have a strong family, good health, work on something that you really care about, then you can make a big difference. I think that my volunteer work has, in terms of trying to help people and be meaningful has been more important than my life as, as an orthopedic surgeon. Thank you to all our alumni for the work that you do to promote and improve human health and healthcare.